really important to point out, not the least of which are traffic jam and snug, and you guys mentioned Motor City Brewing. Um, starting with Motor City Brewing, uh, when this was when John Landardis, who's uh, an artist, first uh, established this place, it was actually one of the first microbreweries in the city of Detroit and the first brewery that, uh, first new brewery in the city since Prohibition. And now, you know, you've got, uh, well, you had, of course, Traffic Jam and Snug also became a microbrewery. Um, and we have actually several distilleries in the city as well as multiple breweries since that time. Like the 1990s, that was the very first one. So in 70 years, there had been no new, it's just, it just, there wasn't either the call for it or there wasn't the interest or there wasn't the, uh, you know, unique talents that once again an artist brought to this area. I think John is a sculptor, an artist. Yeah, yeah, he's a sculptor. Um, right across the street, oh, and actually their pizza, they have a, a wood fire oven as well. So they have the, you know, the 900 degree makes pizza in 90 seconds. And they have yeah, pretty, like yeah, yep, oh, yep. Okay. And so, and they have terrific gear to go along with it. Really good so, food. Yep, agreed. Um, Right across the street is what has come to be known, because it wasn't always called that. It used to be called the Dog House Saloon. It actually used to be a couple of disconnected houses. You remember, it was a neighborhood. And those houses kind of combined and got intertwined and became the Dog House Saloon uh, in the 40s. Uh, fast forward to the 60s, and uh, the name was changed to Traffic Jam and Snug. Uh, but that name has a bit of, uh, everything's got a story, and certainly this is one of them. So a traffic jam, uh, or this traffic jam, actually allegedly arose out of somebody uh, commenting on how small the space was and how many people were packed into it around the bar. It was like a traffic jam. Uh, and then as far as a snug is concerned, uh, if you're not familiar with the term, uh, frequently that term appears uh, in European pubs, particularly uh, British or uh, Scottish or Irish pubs, it is a small side room mm -hmm. that typically was for women to drink discreetly in and clergy. Because uh, you, you didn't want your priest drinking with your wife in the bar while you were there, right? So that's, that's my thought. <laughs> in any event, um, that's a snug. It's also a place typically where food, where some food was served. So traffic jam, bar, and snug, the spot where people would sit and eat. So it was originally owned, uh, when it became traffic jam, it, was, it had been purchased by a couple of Cass Tech High School teachers. Um, it was a super busy, super popular place because you have this university right up the street, you got people who live in the neighborhood. And it nothing was, else. <laughs> and nothing else, right? That's right, you, I, you know best, honestly. Yeah. And so uh, at some point, as the story goes, terrible night service was crazy people all over the place How you doing? And, the, and somebody yelled out does anybody want to buy a bar and in this crowd apparently uh, were some of the service staff uh, so this was this would have been Carolyn and Ben who own, own the restaurant now and the answer from them eventually was yes yes we do want to buy so they purchased it, and they really started, uh, really started a revolution in in that particular spot, Kazune. So uh, they started producing their own artisanal cheeses and dairy products, their own uh, handmade artisanal bread, their own beer. So they produced their own beer, expanded the menu, uh, expanded the inside footprint of, of the restaurant, and it it just continued. It's been a mainstay since that time. However, in 1922, or excuse me, 1922, 2022, there was a fire. And it really damaged three quarters of the inside. With smoke damage, and there was other, some structural damage. The hope is that it will reopen. And as I mentioned earlier on when we were talking back at Jolly Pumpkin, um, the owners have done a couple of pop ups at different restaurants, but we're still not sure what's going to happen. Uh, we're actually going to see a house further down the street that um, the owners of Traffic Jam own and have been redeveloping. They own several properties, uh, but we're, we're still not sure about this. But it gives me an opportunity to point out what is the motto of the city of Detroit. That's at least what the motto is in English. 
and that has been the motto since the 1800s, uh, after Gabriel Richard, Father Gabriel Richard coined it, after the city of Detroit burned to the ground, and that is, we hope for better things that shall rise from the ashes. That is, that is the official motto of the city of Detroit. And in Latin, uh, I'll try not to slaughter it, I do speak Spanish, but my Latin is not so great, uh, speramus meliora resurgit sinerimus. So we hope for better days it'll rise from the ashes. So we really hope so. Um, on the outside, it's, it still has some interesting decor. It's got some interesting planters on it, which if you look closely, look like something you might recognize, maybe, maybe not. If you consider what the men's room looked like at Tiger Stadium uh, when you were a kid, when it was still there, uh, some rather trough-like receptacles. <laughs> That's what those are. Uh, and then on the side, though, those are more of the of the sinks, and they, they form water features. But I point those out. Adaptive reuse that it's well, not its best, but adaptive reuse. <laughs> uh, Actually, the one is from Tiger Stadium. Yeah. Or is this, this one is this is definitely from Tiger Stadium. Okay. So um, let's walk across the street.